Ladies and gentlemen, thieves and crooks, hoodlums of all ages, I am the Comic Outlaw, and I am bringing you a review, yes indeed, on Wolverine and Hercules, Miss Monsters and Mutants, hell yes. Uh, truth be told, your boys been wanting to do this for a while, two of my favorite heroes brought together, so let's uh get on with it, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Now this is back in Paris, during uh, World War II, I think 1940. Just to let you guys know what's going on. Both these men have lived a very, very long time. Especially Hercules. A lot longer than Wolverine. And all of a sudden this peaceful, beautiful day in Paris is interrupted by a giant Nazi robot. Yes, indeed. And as you can tell, there's a lot of these shenanigans going on. This is Baron Strucker. Also a member of Hydra that ends up breaking away from the Nazi regime. But not at this point. So this robot starts attacking and doing what evil robots do. Of course, the French army is basically useless. It's like throwing paper, clip, uh, paper clips at Godzilla. Just not at all. But all of a sudden, as all hope seems to be lost. And Strucker gets that arrogant grin on his face. All of a sudden, he's stopped by Namor. No, not Namor. It is Hercules, the Lion of Olympus. But for some reason, we're in a Namor costume. What's going on here? Well, it's about to be answered right now. As Wolverine and Herc kick back, drinking beers and celebrating the good times. This is what I love about both characters. They have a lot of the same personality quirks. You know, they like to drink, they love to fight, they love mischief. They like going out and having a good time with women. And, uh... Of course, as that robot was doing that, Wolverine was taking care of a little bit of business, assassinating one of the other high-ranking Nazi officials. And for all these years, he thought he was thanking Submariner, and it ended up being the Lion of Olympus. And this is what they, uh, <laughs> and this is what they do on these little go-rounds. They talk, share memories. And here's a little flashback I thought was cool: that back in the day, they met at this club over a redhead. And uh, it's kind of funny because they're both, like I said, hard partiers and they love women. Hercules admits that he had her. And, uh, of course, good old Wolverine, not to be upstage, admit that he had her too. <laughs> and uh, these guys are just basically kicking back, having a few brews and considering whether or not they're going to get some female company until Wolverine kind of ruins the mood. And asks, you know, about his immortality and, you know, that basically all his friends are, are going to die. And it kind of bums out Hercules, which, you know, it would bum anyone out in the middle of a good party. But Wolverine has a point. He's seen a lot of his friends pass away. He's outlived a lot of his friends. He's buried lovers, best friends, brothers in arms. And his lover there, their name's uh, Mirico. I don't want to disrespect her name, but she was one of the great loves of his life. Uh, so much so there was a wonderful Frank Miller four-part series on it oh so cool i will be covering that sooner or later and for a man that was involved in it each year wolverine takes a piece of him maybe an ear hand an arm and now it ends tonight wolverine is tired and he's just gonna kill him and as this man sits there trying to <laughs> accept his fate he wants death He's tired of suffering. He's tired of the pain. He's tired of Wolverine taking from him and taking from him, making him less and less of a man into something else. And it's funny, here's Wolverine and Hercules fighting the hand, which is something I found so cool about this issue. And of course, they're just tearing right through them. I mean, the hand is a, a wonderful set of assassins, of course. You know, they can do an adequate job when it comes to certain things, but not against the line of Olympus and Wolverine. And of course, they're just tearing on through. I love how Hercules just gives a little snap to one of them. Wolverine's still kicking ass, and Hercules decides to, or good old Hercules decides to have a beer, excuse me. And uh, this, is, this is what I love about Hercules' personality. It's real brash, real showboaty. <laughs> they make the perfect party buddies. And of course, this man's holding a box, and you're wondering what's in the box, and as am I, what's in the box? And of course, these guards will not let this man pass. 
And if you've seen any cliche horror movie, that's usually the biggest mistake the guards can make. For this man transforms into something else. Something bigger, darker, ancient. From another time and place. Where there was a different set of legends, myths, monsters. And even, well, let's just say, we'll save that surprise for later. Anyways, Hercules and Wolverine make quick work of these guys, of course. And I love how the hand just, poof, disappears. Let me say that again. Poof. They poof it and they disappear. And as all of them disappear, we discover that this guy turns into a minotaur. Yeah. But not just any minotaur. Not the minotaur in the maze. He's a river god. And he's still holding that box. <laughs> And he just easily slaughters this guy's men. Of course, this guy's ready to die anyway, so it's whether by Wolverine's hand or not. He tells him he's not here to kill him. He's here to help him in a way. Assist him. For they have common enemies. For Hercules is his enemy. And Wolverine, the other man's. And he goes on to explain how there was a day where they tried killing Hercules, doing these 12 tasks of Olympus. Where uh, he was, he had to go on these 12 tasks to kind of save his soul from murdering his wife. It's a whole thing. He was hypnotized to do it. Well, anyways, Hercules lived and he carried on to the modern age. And then they talk about Wolverine, how he's this mighty warrior that he has this hatred in him. This might, you know. And it's very strange, very cool though. I love the reference, how... They, they seem to compare them to the ancient creatures, and I love how the mutants are involved in the New Age. But as I said, he opens the box, and there's a head in there. Dun, dun, dun. Who's in the head? Who will it be? Well, that is for next time, isn't it? And we'll see. For this is the Comic Outlaw. And as always, your main man, Jack Slater, will catch you on the flip side. Yeah. Come on back. <laughs>